So welcome everyone to our uh, study abroad podcast series. So today we have Toshita who is in US right now. She is from Ahmedabad. So we'll be knowing about her journey from Ahmedabad to US. So welcome Toshita to our uh, podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me on the podcast. It was it's really nice to be able to share my experience here. Sure. So we have a set of questions for you and we'll have more discussions on those points so toshita when was the very first uh, time you thought that you know you should go abroad and for studies or something else actually i wanted to go abroad for my studies for my undergrad but because of some situations uh, and my family not wanting me to leave this early i i was uh it was they were very reluctant for me to leave at that time so then i decided i'll just go for my masters so i was pretty much headset on going for my masters to the us uh, pretty much from the start of my undergrad i knew that i had to develop my profile in such a manner that um i would be able to get accepted to the good universities here so yeah it was pretty much from day one that i knew that i was going to come here so that's that's good that uh, you know you had a clear goal and uh, probably your initial goal got uh, modified slightly but uh, you yes. could still fulfill that in the long haul so uh, yes and like you mentioned you did uh, profile building from the like the very first year of college uh, like that so what were the specific things or consciously you did uh, for your profile building in the first 3 uh, 4 years of your ug life so um first of all i decided what stream i want to get into so i did my undergrad in electronics and communication but i was more interested in the software and the coding side of it and i also liked math so data science seemed like a good fit for me uh so that is the reason i started getting into the field and for developing my profile i uh, started doing more projects and everything but uh, later uh, i came to know from many people many of my seniors that to get into good universities you either need to have a very good work experience or such some kind of plus things that might get you ahead of the crowd so that is the reason i started my research uh, experience journey in my second year of my undergrad so i used to work on research projects and uh, i got some of my <clears throat> journal papers published as well so that is the reason um i was more hell bent on doing research and um focusing more towards projects research getting good internships uh to build a overall good profile to be able to put all of that in my statement of purpose to send to universities here yeah that that's good you could use uh, pretty much all your Three four years of UG life to uh, yes. focus on and, building profile. Yeah, and luckily COVID hit at the time, so I did all my undergrad during COVID years, and I could have I could do more things than I could have done while going to college every day. So I thought that it was a, a blessing in disguise for me. uh for you know to be able to work more on my skills and more on the extra things that i was trying to focus on rather than just doing college yeah 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 that's good that's good and uh, like in your pre final year or final year you would have uh, probably given gre toefl ielts kind of tests when was uh, that yes. and how was that experience yes i started my gre coaching in the second year of my undergrad and i wanted to be done with it uh before my third year started uh so i did that and then i gave uh, toefl around the same time i think during my third year so because the thing is that if you're leaving uh, right after your undergrad a year before you have to start applying to all these universities so second year is a good time to start the coaching and then give the exams Uh, accordingly like you have to plan accordingly uh, uh, when are you trying to uh, apply and what is your timeline yeah and how many colleges did you target like uh, from which countries and which uh, locations you applied 
So um, I only targeted universities in the US and I also only wanted to do data science or computer science. That was uh, one of the priorities for me. Uh, the second thing was that uh, my family and I were only uh, cute, like only interested in going to the US if I were admitted to like the top 30 universities or something. So that is the reason I only applied to the top universities here. So I applied to about six universities and I got admitted to three of them. So uh, one was... Uh, UIUC in Illinois, uh, one was UT Dallas, and one was UT Austin. So I got admits from these three universities. Did they offer you any scholarship or a TA work at the time of admit? Uh, no, I wasn't offered anything at the moment. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get RATAs after I came here. But uh, at the time of admits, I didn't receive any. So the reason you chose UT Austin was like, that was the best out of the three offers uh, that time? Um, yes, that was one of the major reasons. Um, the second reason was that um, right now in the US, a lot of IT companies are coming to Texas and Austin especially. So uh, I was, um, it was, it gave me a more of plus points and plus I feel, so it was a gamble between UIUC and UT Austin. And uh, another one of the major reasons why I didn't want to go to UIUC was the weather there. It's very, very cold. And I think Texas has more India-like weather. So that was also one of the reasons. And um, this um, one of other major things was the curriculum of the course, which was here at UT Austin because uh, the course where I was enrolled in it was very flexible in terms of the courses they offered and the kind of courses that we could do. We could also take courses from different departments if you wanted to. So the flexibility was very good with the course and that's why I was more inclined towards UT Austin. Sure, sure, sure. And you had any like relative friends uh, back in US or nothing like that? Uh, so friends and all, yeah, there were some seniors who had come here before, uh, but there were none of the my seniors who had gone to UT Austin specifically. So it was kind of a first experience for uh, me to go to UT Austin. Uh, there were many of my seniors who were in different universities like ASU or someone in California or uh, on the East Coast like Boston or somewhere, but not specifically in Texas. So you are like the very first kind of uh, from your circle at least to reach UT yeah. Austin. Yeah, kind of, yes. <laughs> was that uh, a bit uh, scary for you at times or it was okay, okay? Uh, how was um, that uh, feeling for you? Uh, I was very happy to get the admit, but it, it just, it was a little scary and nervous at some times because it's like, You've lived 21, 22 years of your life with your parents and suddenly not just moving out of the house, you're moving out of the country. So it was a little nervous experience for me, but I was very excited to start my new life here. So yeah, that's why it was and, It was kind of a mix of emotions. And it's not just a, any country, it's like almost opposite side of the globe, like 20 hours yes. of flight and all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. that you cannot, you can, you know, just go like in a weekend, yeah. okay, let's go to India and yeah, you can come yeah. back like on a Monday. So it's like, you yeah. know, plan like well in advance. <laughs> yeah. So once you got your uh, admit and you decided UT Austin, you had to do your visa, flight, accommodation. So which of these three gave you the most uh, headache, stress, anxiety? Uh, I would definitely say the accommodation process would have given me more anxiety than any of these three. The thing was that um, in US, there are many things that are so different from how the flats are built to how things work than India. That for first timers, you don't know a lot of these things after you like you come to know about these things only after you come here. So it's like you have to find a good realtor. You need to make sure that the realtor knows what you are, what your requirements are. You want to live close to the university, but you also want to live in a safe area. 
you want to live in a community where a lot of students are and all of those things and um a lot of apartments here in the us they have the issue of bed bugs and termites and all of these things because a lot of flats here are carpeted which is something like the carpet is all stick to the walls on all sides and everything so these are also some new things that you discover when you start uh, seeing those flats and it's like every single time the realtor does not video call and show you the apartment sometimes she'll just send you the pictures and be like you know you have to choose from this or whatever but um luckily i was able to find a good accommodation that's i think um looking for the correct accommodation is a really daunting process like a lot of people find it difficult to navigate through everything so I was able to find a good apartment near the university with the help of a realtor who had helped other students as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that was a long process for me. Uh, the visa process was pretty straightforward. Um, the uh, I was able to get slots uh, in um, early June for my visa, and uh, both of my the biometric and the interview uh, slots were in Mumbai. and pretty much the next day like within two days i was done with the process so that was pretty straightforward and even for the flights like as soon as i got my visa i booked the flights so so which yeah flight uh, did you book and why so um for inish for the first time when i came here i booked british airways uh one of the major reasons was that um uh, so it directly flies from london to austin so the first port of entry is austin itself in the us so that was very convenient um so one of the reasons for uh, flying british airways was that and also it was one of the cheapest options at the time uh so yeah and was this your very first international flight or you took some international flights before this uh i had traveled to some international countries in asia like nearby india before but not such a big international flight like a long duration flight the maximum farthest i had been uh with my parents was to singapore um so that's a 5 6 hour flight uh but um nowhere close to like 23 or 24 hours flights and your flight was ahmedabad to Mumbai or London or yes. how how was the yes so it was from Ahmedabad to Mumbai was uh, operated with this Tara and then Mumbai to London and then London London to Austin. Did you get lost at the London airport? Uh oh no I didn't get lost I uh, so uh, there were a lot of friends who were coming with me uh so uh British Airways has a lot of flights which all. combine in london so i got a lot of friends i got some friends there so we all navigated the process together so i didn't get lost at all but at the time it was uh, really scary because um i think uh, at the time uh, travel had started more frequently and there were a lot of luggages getting lost on the london airport but luckily my didn't get lost i got all of my luggages on time and everything so it was good for me I mean, not lost, probably delayed, right? <laughs> uh oh no, the the airport had some serious issues with their baggage processes, so a lot of students' luggages were getting lost. Like they were not getting the luggage at all. It was like lost, gone. Oh so, okay. So and and the airlines were also not able to track it. So it was very difficult for some of my friends to be able to find the luggages. But eh, luckily, that didn't happen to me. and uh, you so you started like a group of friends from ahmedabad or you met all of them in london only uh i met some of them in london only uh i had no friends from ahmedabad uh so yeah there were some friends friends who were coming from hyderabad some from bangalore so all of us met in london okay no 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 one from mumbai as well so it was like till london it was like uh, you didn't know yes. anyone yeah yeah so that was also a bit of a anxiety at times or you were okay okay uh no i was fine um i was pretty much prepared to do the journey alone but then 
um at the end moment when my more of my friends booked flights i came to know that they are also traveling with me with me so it helped ease the anxiety a little bit but i was pretty much prepared to travel alone so it was fine for me so your parents when they were sending you alone like did they i mean had any concern or like how was that convincing uh, the confidence uh, fluctuations etc um uh pretty much from the start i was uh, very serious about coming here and uh, it's like you do good good things and you try to convince your parents that i've done this and that's why i deserve to go and all of that so that's why i did some good research papers and all of that to make sure that my profile is good enough to get into the top university so my parents don't have like an excuse to not <laughs> send me abroad so um that's why i worked very hard on my profile that you know i would get admits to some of the top universities here uh and they would be convinced that okay she can handle her studies and handle herself the here so they can be convinced and satisfied with everything here correct so you already understood this that you know making that good profile and getting into the good college is like uh, most of the work done and then obviously once you have that the visa and other things also become smoother because yes, uh, the rejection yes, and all definitely. will be easy correct yes definitely and once you landed in austin uh, how was your experience from the airport to your accommodation or immigration etc um the immigration process was pretty easy here um they just asked me if i had some kind of pickle in my luggage <laughs> which i didn't so they they are really concerned about pickles and some kind of food items which are restricted to be carrying in luggages and all of that and they had seen my i20 and my passport and they just let me go so that was pretty much it for the immigration process and for the first day uh, with one of my friends i lived at a hotel so both of us were sharing a, a hotel room so that was fine and then um then we moved to the accommodation because that's when my lease started um a day after so then that's when we got we moved to the accommodation that uh, i had signed the lease for here so it felt a little weird in the start because it's a new place and it everything feels very different here in the start so it felt a little weird um navigating through all of the process and everything but um yeah it gradually worked out yeah. what were your very initial cultural shocks like at the airport or reaching the hotel or reaching your accommodation did you face uh, something which was quite unique eye catching for you um so i think coming out of the immigration and everything the first thing was when we were going to the hotel seeing the uber prices just made my eyes roll it it the uber prices here are through the roof like it's like in india you pay like for going to the airport which is like 20 kilometers away from your home you would have paid like 200 250 rupees but here they charge like 20 22 dollars for that sort of trip and it's it's like you're when you first land here it's kind of that big shock because you're just trying to convert everything and you're multiplying everything by 83 82 whatever the currency rate is going on and you're like oh this is so expensive where how long can i walk for and all of those things that go in your head even when we started going to the grocery store or started shopping and it's like every single thing here is so expensive like you feel like what should you eat and what should you not eat so it's just the conversion thing that comes in your mind when you're first here and um uh, other than that um no cul- cultural shocks as of nothing that of that sort but i felt like this was one of the major things that was going on in my mind when i had come here initially yeah and uh, there are some uh, differences in the cultural in terms of uh, you know managing yourself by your own cooking mm-hmm. cleaning washing so which of these three probably gave you more uh, headache or the adaptation was a bit tough for you um 
definitely the cooking process uh, i'm not very i'm not a very good cook so it was very difficult for me to uh, you know understand and navigate that process but i used to call my mom every single time oh i have to make this how do i do that i have to make this how do i do that or i used to watch some videos on youtube and learn slowly how to cook and everything because you are on your own here completely with all the process be it cleaning cooking laundry anything you have to uh, so my accommodation didn't have like laundry inside the house they had like a on site laundry so i had to go and then do the washing and the drying and everything on your own so pretty much the weekend goes in that only the cleaning cooking and preparing for your uh, next week so yeah Sure, sure. And uh, did you use this kind of uh, tip that you know you cook once and you eat like three four times or three four days? Uh, not three four days. I'm I I'm definitely uh I used to so generally I cook in the night. Um, so what happens is I cook for dinner and then the lunch next day tomorrow. So that's how it worked for me because it's like you're in the rush of going to the university in the next morning, so you just have to pack your tiffin and leave. Um, so I did most of my cooking during the night, and I prepared majorly for two meals. I didn't do more than that. Um, so not like four or five meals, or I didn't use like a lot of frozen food or like prepare food and throw it in the freezer. I didn't do all of that. so this routine worked for me sure 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 and uh, once you joined your uh, college like the first few days of your uh, hmm. educational journey uh, what were the major differences that you spotted uh, let's say your ug college versus uh, your ut austin so one of the major things is how the colleges are uh, designed here in terms of the infrastructure like major of the colleges in india they have like a you know they would have like a closed premises a proper gate security and everything here the universities are just open from everywhere it's like in the downtown uh, a lot of clustered buildings and a university area but it's not like constricted or restricted in any sort of way so that was the first difference that i noticed the second thing was um in terms of um the crowd uh i felt that uh us obviously has more international crowd and you get to interact with a lot of different cultural people here um so that that was the crowd difference in terms of the studying and everything um uh it's very different because i feel in india it's more of like the professor takes the whole of the class and they are more concentrated on studies they want to make sure that every student is focusing on the studies here it is pretty much that you have to try and focus and listen to the professor uh and everybody's laptops is open everybody is doing their work so it is pretty much that it's it has to be from you inside there's not a lot of hand holding which is done here so that was something different for me so yeah and uh, what about uh, part time jobs and internships how did you secure them and uh, what tips can you give to the audience yeah for uh, part time jobs uh, so for the first semester i was just working in a regular dining hall but uh, i was very bent on getting a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship in my further semesters because that also gave us like tuition rebates and a good stipend so uh, i started polishing my profile according to that and then i reached out to many many professors and i emailed them asking for teaching assistantships and everything so um i think that was one of the uh, first things that i didn't know before that if you're coming in the fall semester like if you're coming here in the us in august and you want like a ta ship or an ra ship right from the start you have to be very quick and start applying and reaching out to professors very early um if you want to secure out right after you come here but even after you're here you can secure them 
but it's like a very tedious process to email all the professors and ask them if they have any open positions and all of that. So you just have to be very active in reaching out to professors. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. But I think you were active enough to secure things for yourself. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, I reached out to a lot of professors across in every department possible um, to get a secure TA ship in my following semester. And uh, how was your rejection handling process? Like, were you rejected uh, a, a lot, a little bit? Uh, did you face more rejections back? in India or here you had to handle more? I think uh, back in India, not so much because uh, I think I came directly, I think I, I came directly after my undergrad. So um, it was like the application process for internships, for TA ships, for jobs, everything started after I came here. So um, for TA ships and RA ships, it's like if you're too late or you don't know when to start the process and everything, it's like the uh, professors will just come out and say that, uh, you know, my position is failed or whatever. And even for internships, uh, I think I came, I came at a time when the market started going downhill uh, here in the US. So it was very difficult for me to find an internship, but I was able to secure a RA position on campus. So uh, during the summers, I worked here on campus uh, as a research assistant in one of the institutes. Uh, and I wasn't able to score an internship, uh, but I was, um, but I still kept working for it because um, I think in the US here, it's very common to uh, score something called a co-op, uh, which is like an internship which goes during your semesters. So I was lucky to be able to find a spring co-op with uh, AMD here in one of in, in my last semester here of my master's. That's good. And I think you continued that uh, co-op to a full-time job now or is it still co-op? Yes. For you? yes. Uh, uh, I did my spring co-op in my last semester and pretty much during like after two two and a half months or something, my manager offered me a full-time job here at the same team. So I continued there full-time. Uh, so that was probably your aim also, right? That let me get in as a co-op and then I'll yeah. probably convince them to you know keep me forever. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. because I think uh, that process is much easier rather than finding a job from scratch. If you get an internship here and then uh, you find a job, it's much easier. Uh, easier to be in the same company and also because you've gained that experience and your team knows you better. So I feel that process is much easier than finding, you know, doing those job applic applications from scratch and everything. Yeah. So this co-op opportunity is an optional opportunity for people. They can also do other courses or how is it for you? Uh, yeah, so the co-op thing is optional. Uh, you can, so in my last semester, uh, one of the compulsory courses being offered is called a capstone project. So it's either you can do a co-op with a company, you can do projects with a company, or you can do projects with professors or uh, work with labs or something. But I was, I, I think the lab part and everything was were already like an option for me. But I wanted to score a co-op with a company because uh, I wanted to gain some experience since I was just graduating that semester. So I was more inclined towards getting a co-op. And uh, like your other batchmates in your class, etc., uh, they would have followed a different path. Also, some of them might have followed the same path as you. So this would be one smart move probably uh, like a good tip to any juniors that uh, you know you should try to do this co-op thing in your last yes. semester because there is a fair chance that you might uh, get an extension uh, as a full-time job also or extension of yeah. co-op itself so that way you don't need to worry about uh, finding a job i mean would you see this as a, a good pro tip for the juniors uh, who will be joining this year or next year um, so I feel that a co-op or an internship in any semester is very helpful because a lot of students, they get summer internships and then they 
uh, get like full time offers during that period as well. So if you can get an internship or a co-op at any of the semesters and you can convince them and even during your uh, internship, you have to work really hard and push all in to make sure that your manager knows that you are working really good and you can be a good asset to the team. Uh, I think uh, that is one of the major things that we have to keep in mind, even after getting the co-op to secure a full-time offer. Obviously, um, after you get an offer, there are many things to do ahead. But first, securing an offer here is really important because right after you graduate, your 90-day clock starts for unemployment. Uh, so it's very important to get a job here. That 90 day clock uh, is your like time is against you, kind of. <laughs> yes, yes, it's very important. Like, after, right after you complete your graduation, you have to make sure you do all the processes for OPT and the EAD and everything correctly, and then um, secure a good job. So, that clock is always ticking in your head, and it's it's very important. Yeah, I see that uh, you have uh, a bit of a LinkedIn. Uh... Uh, like 3000 something followers, 3300 followers you were uh, quite active uh, on linkedin like since your ug days or when was the how was your activity fluctuation in the last uh, five six years so i started being very active on linkedin uh i think after my first year or something because it was like uh, everybody was like, you need to have a good profile if you need to go abroad, you need to have a good LinkedIn profile and everything. Because even during job search and internship search, it's very important to have a polished LinkedIn profile. So I used to uh, do posts and get more engagement because as I mentioned, I did some research work before. So I used to post about that as well. And in the internships I did and the experiences that I had, so I think it was very important to be more active on LinkedIn, uh, build a good network and connect with more people as much as possible. So I was pretty much active on LinkedIn uh, for the past four, five years. Um, connecting with recruiters here and everything is very important because like in India, there is there are no placement cells or anything here which help you get, secure a job or an internship. You have to do it pretty much on your own, reaching out to seniors, reaching out to recruiters, and all of that is through LinkedIn. So maintaining a good LinkedIn profile is very important. Correct, correct. So that's also a good tip for the uh, aspirants that uh, you know work on your LinkedIn profile, stay active, and like probably. Yes posting relevant things and reach out to relevant people from the very beginning uh, because yes. those might help you in the long run and it's like everything is on your own like the job hunt uh, finding your seniors etc like advices so probably yes. it's all available but you need to like search for it a bit yes so, true correct correct so it's good 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 to see uh, how you uh, you know manage to find people and find a job, find your co-op, etc. And uh, you have been working for like seven, eight months now. So how has been your uh, job experience so far? Like how do you see America job uh, compared to, let's say, maybe your Indian peers who might have graduated from your college and are doing something? Yeah, I definitely feel that um, the American work culture is good. Um, uh, it's pretty much the nine to five thing that happens. and. Uh, I have like a good team of people and um, it's it's really different culturally because it's like many different people that are there in your team and learning to navigate all of that and understanding the work culture here, like how people talk and uh, how people behave and communicate with each other. So that's some in personal skills that you need to be more aware of and uh, be more cautious of in general. Uh, because it's a very different way of how people talk here and how people talk there. So that is there. And obviously the culture difference in terms of, um, I think the work culture and everything is very good here. Uh, and it also depends on a lot on your managers, actually, how your work culture is going to be. So um, it's like you you get to have a lot of different experiences here. Mm, yeah how was your uh, calling by the first name experience uh, after 
let's say 2022 years of calling people by sir and ma'am <laughs> yeah definitely it was very weird for me initially actually because um after i had come here to the us during my first semester i took a statistics class which was taught by a professor who was like 65 70 years old and she used to come in the class and say you know call me by my name and i i was and i was so hesitant to do that because it's like first you are so senior and on top of that you are a professor like how do i call you by my by your name so it's very difficult for you initially because uh, in india it's all like sir and ma'am in the universities and it's very different from there so even in the offices everybody addresses you by your first name or even even to your managers and everybody you have to call them by their first name it's like they're very chill about it and once you are more in the habit of it 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 becomes less weird but initially it was a little different for me yeah 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 great 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 so coming to the very last question now so Uh, any pro tip for the juniors who are planning to come uh, to ut austin this uh, this term or next term or next year would you like to give them any specific tips uh, that they should consider maybe you didn't consider or uh, something that a lot of people don't consider anything in from your point of view i think uh, it's very it's very very beneficial if you try and work on securing an on campus very early on uh specifically a ta ship or an rs ship or a graduate assistant because ut austin offers a lot of tuition rebate like um a lot of tuition scholarships and all of that is given when you are in one of those positions so applying very early on reaching out to professors even from india like email professors and ask if they have a ta ship available i think that's one of the major things that um i didn't have a lot of knowledge about and also second um i feel that like it's very important to secure an internship or something so if you want to secure a summer internship then you have to start applying and polishing your profile very early on so after right after you come here uh you need to start building your network and polishing your resume and your linkedin profile because a lot of companies open their uh, internship openings right after uh, you come here so that's in september and october for their summer internships so the process here takes uh, a lot of time the interviewing process and everything and that's why these openings open up really early so i think preparing for these two things early on really helps you glide through uh, easily and even help you in your job search since both of these things add good value to your resume correct 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 so thank you toshita for your uh, insights and uh, knowledge sharing and we hope our audiences would have learned a bit and uh, uh, got a bit of a confusion cleared uh, through this uh, podcast series so uh, Uh, after this we'll be posting this to youtube and uh, linkedin so there might be some people who might uh, approach you so feel yeah. free to accept or reject them according to your preferences <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay then take care toshita wish you all the best for your future thank you thank you Bye. so much for inviting me here thank you